will work with legislatures from across the aisle to accomplish things for our state and district. You need to work you know, collaboratively across the aisle. Because, like, I'm a businessman. And so I mean, we never had Democratic customers, Republican customers. We had good paying customers or not good paying customers. And similarly, you know, ideas, you know, come across. And part of what I'm going to do is to make sure that we're collaboratively with our senators, uh, governor, but also, you know, across the aisle in Congress to make sure that, you know, key issues that drive the economy right here on the ground uh, are going to be put forward. And part of that is, look, working in the majority and the Republican, you know, we'll have the opportunity here in Saratoga County to advance the cause here within the 21st. Uh, I think it's very important uh, to understand first that I vote about 35 percent of the time with the Republicans now in Congress. I'm considered one of the centrists or moderates. Um, most recently in the Farm Bill, um, Chris Gibson and I um, on amendments voted 19 out of 20 times together. And Peter Welch in Vermont uh, voted with us 15 uh, out of 20 times on the amendments that were related to the Farm Bill when it was being processed through the committee to get to the floor. So from my perspective, I'm doing it. Uh, I have practical experience. I work very hard at that, trying to find places and ways in which to uh, be able uh, to reach compromise and actually, uh, uh, if you will, implement bipartisanship rather than talking about it. What will you do to bring jobs to our region? I aim to be the salesman in chief, to be the point person in Washington that people, whether it be local officials, entrepreneurs, business people, not-for-profit leaders on the ground to know that we are going to go ahead and work collaboratively across the aisle on the ground to make sure that we provide solutions and opportunities. But you need investment, which leads to growth, and then eventually gets to jobs. Um, we have a huge district, so it's a little bit different in each place. First, for me, is to look at the unfilled jobs that we have, uh, which are about 3,000. Uh, we, we should be taking the steps to fill them. That means interacting with employers, the Workforce Investment Board, to find out what the needs are in each community. More than likely, we're going to have to focus on training, probably primarily through the community college structure. How long do you hope to stay in public office? Uh, this will be my one and only office. Um, so I think, you know, I think you know, term limits, self-imposed or otherwise, are the way to go. I certainly do not want to be a career politician. I've never been elected to office before, but I think if you, you know, if you serve, you know, four, five, or six terms, and uh, and do the people's business, I think that's enough and to go far from there. I I have not given any thought to additional terms at this point. Um, from my perspective, the issue is what am I accomplishing um, in for the people of the of the district. Uh, and that's going to be an evaluation that I'll make each term uh, to determine whether or not to proceed. Term limits, I'm, I don't think that that's really where the problem lies. There are two issues from my perspective that are more important. The uh, One is publicly funding campaigns, so you take a lot of the uh, dollars out of the process. The other is you have to have more competitive districts, so less gerrymandering. If you did those two things, I think term limits would take care of themselves. What will you do about unfunded mandates to ease the burden on taxpayers, and which mandates specifically would you work to repeal, if any? Part of it is to go back to the federal level and say, look, if you're going to have a program, if you're not going to fund it, then vote against it, number one. You know, number two, when you have things that are acutely challenging, in particular Medicaid, which, which is a federal program that goes through the states and down to the county level, where funding isn't there and county budgets and, and, and town governments are feeling the squeeze and unfortunately our taxpayers are as well. We need to change the program, put more control lower, meaning at state or county level. Um, I'll give you a real good example. We have uh, right now 84 different programs that are used to monitor teachers from the federal ed department. Um, that is an area where we could condense that down to a couple, I suspect. Uh, we have over 50 programs to provide vets um, job-related services. Uh, what those two things do, in my view, is spend dollars that are probably not well spent. And the second is that they uh, create their own body of regulations. So you could remove the regulations and get better, better outcomes for vets and better outcomes for teachers and therefore the school system.